this is the Experience Podcast, and it's uh, just me this week. Um, we had a couple last-minute cancellations, and by last minute, I actually mean post-start time cancellation. You know, like where <laughs> technically we were supposed to start a few minutes ago, and they canceled, or they, you know, we were supposed to start a few minutes before. I called them canceled. But nonetheless, we're going to persevere. This is going to be a solo episode. I have no, like, you know, like the normal solo episodes that I do by myself. Um, well, that's redundant, I suppose. Solo episodes that I do by myself. I'm off to a great start. Um, well, like the normal solo episodes, uh, we, I might just start rambling and it might end early. Uh, but I, I don't remember how long the last one was. I feel like I did one that was like 40 minutes and I don't know how I did that. Uh, but this one is even looser of a topic. I don't really have anything to talk about which makes great podcast material i have some loose thoughts here so some of these are like uh bits that i i wrote back in college and um we'll just kind of debut them here you know leave a leave a comment no one's ever left a no one's ever left a comment on well people leave comments on i shouldn't say that people leave comments on the youtube on the youtube uh videos and we appreciate that but you can also leave reviews and other things on the uh on the Spotify or Apple podcast, you know, wherever you're listening to the, the stuff. Um, but, you know, we want people to leave a, an audio comment as well. So, you know, if you if you find some of these topics interesting, just uh, go ahead and shout it out. Um, but we ha- I, have, uh, I have some things here. I'm not even sure what some of this means, you know. Like here I have free samples at an Amazon store. So what I think this was, but this that's what this is gonna be. We're gonna to try to decipher old notes of mine from from like five years ago and figure out what I meant when I when I wrote these things. Free samples at an Amazon store. I think that was about so at Georgia Tech, there was a new Amazon store. Um, I don't know if it's I guess it's technically part of campus. At Tech Square is what it's referred to, which is like east, um, like northeast of of the main campus area. They at the time that I wrote this, I think. It was a new Amazon store. And I think I saw... Oh, you know what? No. For, I was go, I was going... So I was going to say is, I think I saw a sign that said free samples. But now I'm thinking this this uh, phrase here that I wrote was actually my idea for an Amazon store, which is that they have free samples. And what that would even look like. No, you know what? Now I'm backtracking on that. Maybe, maybe there was a sign. No, there wasn't a sign. That's a little ridiculous. But yeah, what if you had free samples at an Amazon store? You go in and you get like, I don't know, free pencil. Like, what is it? What is a sample? A pencil? I don't know what you would even sample at an Amazon. What does Amazon sell? Everything? That's the thing. You can you could try out a blender. Um, so free samples at an Amazon store. I think that's what it was. It was supposed to be some sort of bit about you go in and you can try Amazon products, maybe. You can try, a, you, you know, you can charge your phone there because you can go try out the cord, right? Um, well, let's go to, here we have, put a bunch of students in a dark room early in the morning. That's the next phrase we have here. And I think that's pretty much, pretty self-explanatory. Oh boy, my neighbor is creaking up, creaking the the, the floor again. They, I don't know what it is. I don't think this was a problem. Um prior to my newer neighbor who moved upstairs, but you can hear the new neighbor walk very loudly. So I, I, I apologize for that if, if it if it comes through the audio. I'll have to listen back. But anyway, this phrase, put a bench of, or put a bunch of students in a dark room early in the morning. I think that is pretty self-explanatory. The bit there was why um, for teaching classes, whether, I guess this is obviously about college, but you know, this can apply to anything, high, high school, middle school, wherever. But you're putting a bunch of, of young adults, we'll call them, uh, into a, into a classroom, and then turn off the lights to put on your little PowerPoint presentation or whatever you know, whatever you're showing. A lot of times, it's turning off the lights. Like that's just a danger early in the morning when you have classes starting at eight o'clock in the morning or earlier. Um, you know that that doesn't seem like a good idea for these these uh, these people who are probably staying up late. They don't get a lot of sleep because they were doing homework or partying or some combination of doing homework at a party. You know whatever whatever you're doing, and you're just throwing them into a dark room and you're and you're hoping they stay awake. And that just seems like a bad idea. Uh, here's uh what is this? This says copier stapler hole punch. 
Now, I have no idea what that's about. Home button, is it, is it that... Well, some copiers do staple stuff now, but maybe the idea here is it would also hole punch your paper. I'm not sure. Let's go to the next one. This one's called pre-boarding. And this is a topic that, this is something that I know exactly what it's about because it's still something that bothers me. Why is it called pre-boarding? Okay, they're boarding. It, the people that board for pre-boarding are boarding, right? You're, by definition, you're boarding. So how is it pre-boarding? That doesn't make any sense. It's not, it should not be called pre-boarding. It's just the first stage of boarding or first uh, wave, whatever it's called. What's it called? Group? First group of, of boarding, of the boarding process. It's not pre-boarding. Pre-boarding is what, like, uh, the people that go in to clean the area, whether it's the flight attendants or some, some other staff or a contractor or whoever, uh, to clean up the plane. That's pre-boarding because that happens before the boarding. Um, that's the rant for that. The other part of that, I suppose, is about the whole boarding process because, um, no, this isn't, no, I was going to say the next one might be that, but it's not. Um, the next one is a whole, is, is about the whole boarding process because some of these airlines, and I won't say the names of which ones, but some of them have like 12 boarding groups and it's like ridiculous because they only, only, there's only like people in three of them. So they'll go like boarding groups one through four and like two people walk up. Boarding groups five, six, and seven, no one, and then they say boarding groups eight and nine, and that's everyone. You know, <laughs> it's like, what's the point of all these groups? It's not evenly dis distributed, and and some of it I don't even know what the difference is. I guess you have to pay more to go high, to board earlier, which is another thing. Um, you know, I I don't understand all the incentives to boarding early. Okay. Now, I, I understand the obvious ones, right? You want space for your overhead bag. That's a key thing for a lot of people. Usually, I try to travel with just a just a carry-on because I go on short trips. So, and I can, you know, I can squeeze everything into something I can shove under the seat. So, that's usually what I try to do. But I know people like to have, have overhead bin space. And so, yeah, that could be an advantage to boarding earlier. Um, but... Here's the thing. So usually they'll let you check your luggage for free if you get to the point where they run out of space. So that's one thing. And, and oftentimes they'll give it to you right as you walk off the plane. So, so you know, there's some, unless you need, you know, there's stuff in there you need. Uh, there's, there's really little incentive for that. And then, moreover, when you board early, you're just sitting on the plane longer. And you're just sitting there, you're watching other people board for like the next half hour. If you're in an aisle seat, you're getting bumped around by people trying to push through and whatever. I mean, what what is the, you know, there's, again, I don't understand the incentive system for uh, the for boarding early. Um, so that that's that's my, my thing about boarding, or pre-boarding, I guess, as well, is what I wrote here. Um, the next thing I wrote about is uh, Starbucks, I wrote here. And I wrote that they really, all the, a lot of the items they serve is just sugar and cream with coffee on the side. Um, that one, I don't really need to spend a whole, I don't need to belabor that one. I think that one's pretty straightforward. A lot of the drinks are basically just sugar and you get coffee, or you know, depending on the drink. And then also like, even if you just get a coffee, they'll, they'll just... Uh, throw so much cream and sugar, or cream or and or sugar, I should say, and uh, it basically that's all you're drinking anymore. Um, the next one, okay. Well, my patient. Uh, let's go to because some of these are like I they're like I, I, there's no there's nothing here. Um, pills. Let's talk about pills. So I wrote here pills, lots of them. When you go to a hotel, how many pillows are usually in the bed? Because I've noticed a trend of ever increasing number of pillows when you go to to you know to a hotel like i think i went to a hotel um sometime in the last six months or maybe a year and there were a good like seven or eight pillows on this bed like they just load up the pillows it's way too many like at some point you're just throwing pillows all, like the whole floor was just pillows because i couldn't I didn't have room to put in them anywhere so i just throw them all over the ground it's like you don't have any room for them. So, like, what are you gonna do? Oh, now the there's some sort of a, a 
maybe a lawnmower or something outside causing noise. So hopefully it doesn't disturb us. Anyway, pillows. There's too many of them sometimes. Why do you need so many pillows? Um, okay, the next one. So everyone's heard of discount tire, which is everyone's favorite or, you know, everyone's place that they know, uh, place that does like car stuff, car fixes. Well, I happened to be in Florida recently and I guess when I wrote this down, because some of these are, look like they're more recent. Um, this one's a little more recent. Oh, <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, the next one is talks. The next uh, bullet point here talks about boarding. So I was really big on the boarding thing. Uh, but anyway, budget breaks is the name of a place in Florida that I guess fixes your brakes. But it's called budget breaks. Yeah, I, I kind of ruined the bit there. I'm sorry, guys. The flow got all messed up because I noticed something else. But anyway, budget breaks. Um, yeah. That's what's that's that's a that's a name. It's a real place. Let me look it up. Maybe let me make sure it's still a real place. Budget breaks. Um, I'll put in where I know. Yeah, budget breaks. It's a real place. Um. Yeah, they uh they they I guess they fix your your brakes and probably other car related items. But it just feels a little strange going to a place called budget breaks. You know. I guess it's kind of like I said, it's kind of in line with the discount tire, um, but it, you know, like like it's almost like they couldn't name the place probably good enough breaks. <laughs> they could just name it that, and they would probably send the same message. Yeah, you know, probably good enough breaks. Uh, you know, budget breaks. All right, the next thing. This talks about COVID. So yeah, I know there's uh there's different th uh thoughts and points of view on on the whole COVID situation over the last however many years at the time of this recording it looks like three years just over three years of COVID stuff and masks and all vaccinations and all that I'm not going to get into that into that part um, but I will I will hit on this thing because what I noticed you know whether it's signs or um, people telling you this directly but the the, the number of things I, I was specifically, specifically i'll highlight on signs let's say great cleaning you know cl clean well clean down the take restaurants that say restaurants that'll say like tables clean down um clear of covid you know clear of covid19 virus or whatever with products that kill the covid19 virus and it just starts to make you wonder, what were they doing before COVID? Were they, you know, and I don't, not any, I'm not talking about any specific place, but like, what were these things, like airplanes, like restaurants, like anything you go to, the bus, were they cleaning before COVID? Like, was none of this, were they, were restaurants just licking your forks clean and then throwing them back on the next plate? Like, what was happening here and how, how clean, how have we, uh, how did we get? How did they get away with this? Basically, is what I'm getting at. What? How did? Why was nothing cleaned before COVID? How did COVID cause things? For COVID, there's like a bit that I think I heard like COVID caused like men to wash their hands in the bathroom. <laughs> you know, it, it caused people to actually have to shower, things like that. Like, come on, like what? What are we doing here? Why? Why? Uh, what was happening prior to COVID? And maybe is it happening now again now that uh, a lot of uh, or pretty much all of the uh enforcements have been have been retired we'll call it uh, as far as uh precautions that we had to take but yeah so uh cleaning post or pre-covid uh kind of makes you wonder now let me go up i'm gonna go all these so this is that was kind of like the last half of this list um i'm gonna go to the front here or i guess the the top all the way to the top and, and let's look here. What I what I have, and I have um, YouTube autoplay professors. And I think this is just about. This is very college specific, obviously. But anytime you see any sort of teacher, you know whether it's a college professor or maybe in high school or in other situations, maybe at work if someone shows something, but no one knows how YouTube autoplay works. They'll pull up a video, or you know they'll have like a PowerPoint or something. They'll pull up the video, 
on a browser. Fine. First of all, they never know how to go full screen. Okay, that's that's <laughs> that's something else. They can't just go full screen. They have to like do. They just leave it there. They go to theater mode. I'm not sure why theater mode exists. Uh, if anyone knows anything about why theater mode, please please let me know. That I don't know the purpose of theater mode when there's a full screen mode that is the better version of theater mode. But anyway, uh, maybe just for the aspect ratio, that's the only thing I can think of because you could maybe. But uh, no, I no, it's not. I'm not justifying it. Anyway, uh, YouTube autoplay. The the teachers and professors they don't they don't understand because they'll click they'll watch the video and then as soon as the video is done they just go back to the PowerPoint. But all, YouTube auto plays on, so the next video goes right into it, and then they go, "Oh no, what's happening?" And they go back, and they go back to the video, and they see that it's still playing, and then it's a whole thing, and they don't know what to do, and they're panicking. It's like, come on, <laughs> if you've never shown a video before, you don't understand how autoplay works. There's even a thing. So I'm gonna pull up YouTube right now. I'm gonna pull up a YouTube video. I don't actually. It might be like I'm not gonna do it. But anyway, there's a there's a usual little bar where you can tick to turn off autoplay. And you can do that. Or uh, another option is to just hit pause on the video when you're done with it or close out of it if you don't need it anymore. There's options here. So, to, you know. Uh, the next, I don't know what this is about. So I'm going to skip that. I have no idea. Uh, I wrote Thanksgiving. I don't know what Thanksgiving. I wrote airplane, and I have plenty of plane bits. And I already talked about the boarding things. I don't know that. Next, I wrote Uber R and B, and that's because anytime you've been in an Uber, you know that they always play R and B music. What's up with that? It's always like some generic R and B music that you've never heard of, but that sounds nice enough that you can't complain too hard. And I guess that's the reason why it's always that type of music. Because it's like, oh, this is just gentle, whatever. You can't really be angry at it, but you can't love it. It's just fine. And, you know, I'm not meant to be disparaging R&B fans out there. I'm sure there's a lot of great R&B content. But it, 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 the stuff in Ubers is, is kind of the generic version. I'm sorry. Uh, where is this? Reverse Uber Eats. Well, what does this mean? And this is definitely a bit that uh, sounds familiar. Reverse Uber Eats. I think that's where you bring the food to. <laughs> you, oh, you know what? Uh, I think that this is about. Yeah. So, because I, I let me read the for the whole story here is uh, no parking or the whole. Uh, structure here is no parking comma coming in with us and then reverse Uber Eats. So I think this is about a time where we, by we I mean me and, and some people, I don't know how, I don't remember who was with me, but we found an Uber driver um, I think it was an Uber Eats guy because it was, he was just at a uh, a restaurant that we were trying to go to it was a fast food restaurant I'll say and just sitting in the parking lot waiting for food and i think the point here is that the idea is reverse reverse uber eats where mm, now i'm kind of now i kind of doubt myself well okay what i was gonna say is you order the food online for someone else to pick up for themselves which is reverse for the uber guy to pick up for themselves is that what i meant by reverse uber eats or did i mean did i mean you um, the Uber driver eats, no, that would be inter, intra Uber eats. No, like it's gotta be that. I, it, I don't remember. Uh, maybe it'll come back to me later, but by later, I mean not on the show because we're almost done here. We thought, you know what? I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm pretty proud of myself. We've almost gone 20 minutes by now, which is like technically a long enough episode to post. If I hadn't gone 20 minutes, I probably just would have cut this out. But we went on long enough. I talked by myself long enough. Because again, I don't have anything to talk about. I haven't, I mean, I saw, I, I've seen some like movies and TV shows, but it's like, eh, I mean, I guess I'll beef and it's like, yeah, it's fine. But it's not, it's like, I don't really have anything to say. Um, 
yeah. But I'm I'm out of stuff here that I want to talk about. I mean, some of this is just like I don't I don't even I don't really, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I can wrote networking, and uh, you'll notice a lot of this stuff is like uh, related to questions on my uh, questions or answers game. Uh, which is the game? Yeah, questions or answers. Um, which we haven't played in a while. You know, maybe I'll come up with new questions for that. Uh, for the questions or answers game, we can ask the guests because that's something else that I. That's, how many do we have of those? Let me let me pull that up and see how many we have on the questions or answers document, which is somewhere here. Here we go. It's <laughs> I can't. I forgot. I labeled it dumb questions to ask our guests. And I have, oh, it's seven pages. How many? It's 267 questions. So clearly, I put thought into this. And a lot of them aren't good. Actually, most of them aren't good. But the ones that are good, you know, we have some classics up here. Now I'm just going to read questions. You know, questions or answers, one of the best. That's why it's called that. It's called questions or answers. You know, I don't even know what I meant by some of these big trash cans or small trash cans. What does that even mean? Why would I even ask that? <laughs> Triple A or AARP? I'm not sure. You know, like some reason I'm like, why am I even asking this? And then of course is Tanner attractive, which you have to ask every guest, regardless of their, uh, of their, you know, however they feel about Tanner. Even if they don't know him, I think I still ask them. Okay, so that's that. Um. I think we're done here. I think we're good. I, I don't really have anything else to say. Um, okay, we had a couple last minute cancellations, so I'm kind of smiling because I, I'm recording this in less than 12 hours. No, I shouldn't say that. About 12 hours um, away from when this is supposed to go live. So we're really in crunch time here. So I, I can't really find anyone last second. Uh, but I had two great guests. That's why I feel, I feel bad because it would have been a great show. But alas, uh, I am now a person that says alas, it's not it's not gonna happen. So um, tune in for next week when I'll hopefully have a better episode, uh, or maybe it'll, uh, it'll just be me again. Who knows? Uh, all right, let's uh, let's end it there.